One of the easiest questions to answer is how many hours is high hours on a tractor? Oh wait, did I say easy? Never mind, scratch that. Talk about one of the most subjective topics that's in the tractor world. Shoot, in the vehicle world, in the boat engine world, anything, you know, ATVs, anything that has an hour meter on it, you know, mileage on it, man, you're gonna get a lot of opinions, a lot of reasons, a lot of variables. It's almost like playing with fire. So you know that's right up my alley. Here we go. Okay, so here's some food for thought, all right? So listen up. If I drive my car at an average speed of 50 miles an hour for 2,000 hours, it will have 100,000 miles on it. Never buy used because you're buying somebody else's problems. Factory warranties last 2,000 hours. Ever wonder why? So those are some quotes right there that I found when researching this topic. So those aren't, that's not me saying that. These are things I kind of cherry picked from different threads and blogs and things like that that I found online. Okay, so I'm gonna give you this example here because this is a very good perspective if you think about it, at least in my opinion. And so the people that know these tractors better than anybody else is gonna be the manufacturer. And their confidence level in their machine is gonna tell you a whole lot about what's high hours and what's low hours. So all these machines now, you know, John Deere, Kubota, any of the other major manufacturers are coming out with 2,000 hour residential powertrain warranties, okay? 2,000 hours, okay? So that is, or six years, okay? So six years, 2,000 hours. But that is a huge chunk of time, you know? And so these manufacturers, they're not looking to, to pay warranty claims, you know? They don't want that profit coming out of their pocket. And so if I'm the manufacturer, I'm gonna provide a warranty that is substantial and robust, but I'm gonna do it well before I expect there to be significant issues with the tractor that I'm selling, before I start to experience those significant costs to uh, shell out to have repairs made on my tractors and on my equipment. So I feel like if manufacturers are willing to provide a 2,000 hour, six year warranty on their machine, they're quite confident that the machine is gonna last well beyond that, that that 2,000 hour mark is really nowhere near the limitations of their machine and that it can go um, substantially longer than that, you know, whether it's 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000 hours. Otherwise, what would be the point? Every machine is going to experience failures. It's going to experience um, unexpected things that happen to it, you know, and, and, and just that failure rate is going to increase over time at an exponential uh, number at a certain point. So I think it's a good viewpoint to consider from the customer point of view, all right? So myself included, because, you know, the manufacturer is not thinking they're going to cough up millions of dollars in repairs for customers with tractors that are under powertrain warranty with under 2,000 hours. I mean, they are expecting those significant repairs to be well beyond that time frame and well after that powertrain warranty has expired. Okay, so let's look at this in a different frame of reference, a different context, okay? We're going to do this based on hours per week that you use your tractor. So we're going to look at one hour a week, five hours a week, 10 hours a week, and 40 hours a week, okay? Now, if you're using your tractor one hour a week, man, I pity you, I really do. That's just a crying shame. Now, 40 hours a week, the other end of that spectrum, you know, that's essentially having a full-time operator. You're probably using it commercially in some sort of application where there's somebody sitting on that machine, maybe not the same person, but somebody sitting on that machine eight hours a day, five days a week. Okay, so after one year of use, if you're using it one hour a week, that's 50 hours a year. Five hours a week, 250 hours a year. 10 hours a week, 500 hours a year. 40 hours a week, 2,000 hours a year. So if you like what you see here, would you consider hitting that subscribe button below? Go ahead and hit subscribe. Make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. I'd love to help you out with the tractor and attachment. I can put together a whole package for you, help with delivery and financing too. I mean, how many hours do you think you're gonna put on your tractor here? If you sit down there and think about it, you know? Write it out, it doesn't take long. It takes you a minute to do that, you know? How many hours are mowing or brush hogging, you know? Or plowing your driveway in the winter and grading and moving material around and going to the woods and using your grapple to get logs out and split everything up and stack it and haul it and move it around, that kind of thing. How much time do you think you're putting on there? I mean, I would hope you're putting well over an hour a week. And you know, you see all these tractors out there that get sold and, and that's what I specialize in, okay? Or, are buying tractors that are maybe one, two, three, four, five years old and they only have one, two, 300 hours on them. And so we're talking, these guys are only using them 50 hours a year, 60 hours a year, 70 hours a year. And if you put that into perspective and you sit there and break it down month by month, that means these guys are using these tractors like an hour a week, four hours a month, five hours a month. That's just incredibly low usage. It's almost, why'd you get the tractor? You know, use these things if you're gonna get them. 
So that's what I want to try to give you my perspective on. And I think we're going to have a good conversation below in the comment section as well, because there are so many opinions on what high hours is. And is there something else you should consider instead of high hours, perhaps how the tractor was treated, if it was abused, signs you can look for, things like that, help you make a better decision that way. Because most of these tractors, I'm telling you, are going to go way longer than any of you guys are ever going to own them, ever going to use them. They're just going to sit there and they're going to keep on chugging away. You may have a seal that goes out here or there, like on an axle, something like that, but you know, or on a loader cylinder, something relatively minor. But for the most part, these machines are going to outlast all of you operators and what you're going to use them for. I get it. I know there's some big farmer op operations out there, big commercial construction, that kind of thing, applications where they're going to get used, you know, on a very heavy duty basis. I'm not really talking about that, but it is a good testament and it'd be a great viewpoint for you guys to chime in and give examples of how many hours have been on your machines, what you've done to get them to that point. You know, we're talking 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, maybe 12, 15,000 plus hour uh, uh, timeframes on machines, on these engines here. And how do you accomplish that? You know, I mean, through your regular maintenance intervals or a stroke of luck or, or what are you doing there to get that uh, to that kind of interval with the same engine, the original engine? But I'll tell you what, I am hammered with that question all the time because I put hours in all of my listings, okay? It's in every single listing that I have on my website for a tractor. But I still get asked that question all the time because I don't know, I guess it, I'm, <laughs> I must be hiding the hours on there. And so I'll say a tractor has 200 hours or 180 or it could have 420 hours. And I'll get told time and time again, oh, that's way too many hours. I don't want a high hour tractor. And I, I just kind of chuckle because that tractor at, at two, three, 400 hours has had one, two oil changes in its whole life. And it's like, you think it's near the end of the life at that point, but that thing is just getting broken in, you know? I mean, these are not high maintenance machines, you know? So you don't have that many uh, maintenance cycles, you know, on, on the main, main stuff, you know? You wanna grease it on a regular basis, check the air filters, wheel torque, you know, uh, lug torque and all that kind of stuff. And of course, all the, all the regular stuff, but hydraulic oil, engine oil, filters, those kinds of things are pretty low maintenance, pretty big intervals in there as well. You know, so for me, I am much more concerned with how that tractor was used. You know, what's the application that it was used for, um, that kind of environment that it was in. And that'll tell you a whole lot about the machine. So, you know, I try to stay away from the most part, uh, machines that are used in heavy construction, like concrete work, that kind of thing. That's really hard on the front ends of tractors, really hard on the loaders, um, all the uh, the bushings and everything else that's that's in there, you're going to see a lot of leaks, a lot of really sloppy fittings and play, and and typically also you'll you'll see the concrete that's been kind of been splashed around and dried and and hardened all over the machine, the front of the machine there. And um, I try to stay away from that type of machine if I can because that's typically going to live in a pretty harsh environment. You know, another good example would be working on chicken farms, that kind of thing. You know, um, I got one in one time that had clearly <laughs> been used on a chicken farm, and I tell you, it took hours to get that thing clean and you know it just had chicken bones and beaks and chicken poop everything in every nook and cranny of that whole machine it was incredibly filthy even though you shined it up on the outside looked just like one of these guys here on the on the inside every nook and cranny in that engine compartment underneath the frame it was just packed full of that stuff and so that was a a nightmare to try to get clean. Another tough one is going to be winter maintenance, okay? So something that's been used in that type of application specifically where it's going to be exposed to a, a lot of salt and uh, just corrosion typically on the three-point hitch area, the whole backside, up underneath the frame, all around there, a lot of fittings, uh, wheels, everything just gets corroded. You know, all your, your fittings and even your, your connections just can corrode and just it can just lead to a lot of problems. And so that's a very bad environment to have a tractor. If you're looking to buy one, you know, to have one that was living in an environment like that. Not, I'm not talking to somebody who has a tractor with a mower, a loader and a snow blower and is taking care of their driveway. I'm talking something that lives and is used solely for that kind of purpose. That's a tough one. So what should you focus on instead of hours, you know? And so I made a list here that I had written down because I believe in the, uh, the abuse being a bigger concern than the actual hours, okay? Because if a tractor has 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 hours, as long as that owner's been taking care of it, and it shows, you know? I mean, typically, if you see a beat up, junky, nasty, dirty old tractor, it's hard to believe that that thing's been maintained like, like it's supposed to be, okay? And I don't care what anybody tells you. Yeah, I've been changing that oil on a regular basis and doing this and that. Well, you know what? If they're not doing anything else on the stuff that you can see, I find it hard to believe that they're taking care of the guts underneath as well. Most folks that have care and concern for a machine are gonna take care of the outside the same as they're gonna take care of the inside. 
So items that concern me, items that I care about, you know, is it blowing smoke, okay? And if so, what color smoke is it blowing? So what's the oil levels? Check the hydrostatic, check the engine levels, that kind of thing. You know, the front axle levels, what color is that oil? You know, if you got some really dark, black, cruddy engine oil in there, well, that sucker's been due for a while. You know, I mean, I, I get, you know, you can get it fairly dark and, and maybe not quite be due for an oil change, but if that stuff's just thick and nasty, well, man alive, it's time to get that done. You know, if you have a lot of slop in the loader bucket, for instance, okay, that means that perhaps all those Zerk fittings that are on the loader here have not been greased on a regular basis. And instead of having that grease being that uh, protection there between the steel on steel, it's got down to that steel on steel and instead rubbed, you know, grooves into it, shaved away steel, and that's how you develop that slop and wear those bushings out. You know, same thing with steering, you know, have you been keeping that front axle full like it should be and, and there's nowhere really for that oil to go unless you see a bunch of it pooling underneath but is that steering nice and tight just like it should be you know put a tractor through its paces i mean that's what i do when i get every tractor in here do i trust all the dealers that i work with i certainly do you know but i still want to double check and validate everything uh, when it comes into my shop and so that's one of the things i do with every tractor is drive it around just to test it all out you know put it in the different ranges high low high low medium you know, if it's a hydrostatic, if it's a gear drive, you know, I'm going to be putting it in forward, reverse, high, low range, one, two, three, four, all that kind of stuff. Just check it out, make sure how it's shifting, it's doing a good job. You know, I don't want there to be any big grinding issues where it's very challenging to, to shift in and out of gear, that kind of thing. So those are all signs that there could be a more uh, significant underlying problem. You know, so I found that a pretty good sign is actually loaders and buckets. They tell a pretty good story, okay? Because if you're looking at a loader and you see a bucket and the bottom edge of that bucket is worn all the way back into the side plates or uh, you look at the top edge and the side edges and they're completely bashed in and buckled in and, and everything else, that's the sign that, that that bucket's been living a pretty hard life there, which means the whole front end, the whole loader assembly, the front end of the tractor has been living a tough life there. So typically I'm shying away from anything that's really beat up like that. And I'm not talking about there's a little uh, wrinkle on the top edge or something, you know, I mean, things like that happen. But if that thing looks like it's been roughed up and beat up, that's something that I'm not even going to buy. And honestly, really the overall cosmetic condition. And again, it comes back to the fact that, you know, most of these guys, if they're taking care of the outside of their tractor, they're most certainly taking care of the inside of the tractor as well. Um, you know, the inside is what's going to keep it going, but those guys that spend the extra money, the extra time to keep it clean, keep it washed off, keep it uh, waxed, you know, if, a, if a, a light gets cracked, they replace it, that kind of thing. That goes a long ways of showing you that they're maintaining their tractor well on an overall basis. So this tractor here is a 2018, all right? So it's two years old, it's got 140 hours on it, 70 hours a year, what is that, like one and a half hours a week? <laughs> Something like that. I mean, that's, that's really almost nothing for a machine. And so I'll have folks tell me that 140 hours is high hours and they want something with lower hours. You know, I've got a, a beautiful 2038 sitting over in the other stall over there. Looks fantastic, runs fantastic. Everything works just like it should. Doesn't need a thing. And uh, I've had four or five people now say, hey, I'm looking for something set up just like that, but with low hours. I don't want a high hour machine. And I'm sitting there thinking, it's got 400 hours on it, you know, 420 hours. It's been through two oil changes in his life. You know, I mean, this is not a high hour machine. It's just getting started. It's got plenty of factory warranty. So I feel like with these lower hour machines, you know, that have two, three, 400 hours on them, it's a lot less likely and there's a lot less probability of lapsed maintenance cycles. So if they're only seeing one or two major intervals that have come up, you know, there's a less, a lower probability of something happening because especially towards the beginning of ownership, that's when folks tend to take care uh, of their machines, of their equipment better. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys watching take care of your equipment the same no matter how old as it is. But the reality is, is the fact that most folks are gonna take care of something, they're gonna pay attention to it, appreciate it more in the beginning than, you know, five years down the road. So you couple that with the lower hours with uh, the perhaps greater appreciation for that machine and wanting to maintain it in the first few hundred of hours and it kind of lines up to those being what i consider low hour machines guys okay these are going to have a long life ahead of them you know nothing to worry about for a long time to come sure minor things could come up but for the most part that's going to be covered under powertrain warranty for most of these newer machines even older ones though okay i mean it's it's just the likelihood of something happening on a low hour machine like a three four five hundred hour machine is really low compared to a five, six, seven thousand hour machine that could potentially need a whole overhaul or transmission rebuild, something like that.
Hey, well, I want to thank you so much for watching. Again, if you haven't done so yet, consider hitting that subscribe button below. You know, if you'd love to support the channel, make sure you head to that description. Uh, I got a lot of links in there going to my Amazon store where you can buy a lot of things that uh, I have used or have been recommended to me for us tractor owners and folks with a shop and a homestead, that kind of thing. Uh, I will get a commission if you purchase from there. You can always head on over to goodworkstractors.com. I'd love to help you out with an attachment with a tractor, put together a package for you, can help with delivery, can help with financing as well. Hey, thanks so much for stopping by. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.